Hi, you're listening to Avenue Insights. Information relating to investment approaches or individual investments should not be construed as advice or endorsement. Any views expressed in this podcast are based on information available at the time and are subject to change without notice. So we thought for today's conversation, given that we're now, you know, we've turned the page on a new year, we've just released our, our quarterly letter for the end of 2020, we thought it would be, you know, a great time to put out another episode and, and, and sort of walk through how we see 2021 unfolding. Um, the Avenue quarterly letter is now available on the website. Uh, it was released yesterday. And so maybe if we can start off by saying, what would be some of the initial conclusions you draw from the quarterly letter that we sent out to clients? Yeah, this is was such an interesting time. And I think it's trying to explain this as concisely as possible. And, you know, in our investment meeting each week, we talk about just all the, the contradictions of we're still in a pandemic, the economy is still, you know, shut down. We're even talking headlines in the newspaper today. Do we need more restrictions? And yet we actually have this strong stock market. So even though, in, in, you know, you're personally feeling uneasy about everything, we do have an expectation that over the next nine months, 12 months, the economy will be recovering mm-hmm. and we'll be all hopefully getting vac- uh, you know, vaccinations. I know my father had vaccination last week in his nursing home. So it's all positive, although it's just going to take time. So the real contradictions that we find is that the, the, we've had a, a recovery of the stock market, but there's been so much money that's gone into the system that we've almost got, you know, elements of, of you know, sort of uh, mania. It's not a, a bubble. I hate using the term bubble because from everything I, I've learned about bubbles is that it has to do with using excess debt. Here, if you want to say where the debt is, the government's borrowed a lot of money and filtered it into the financial system. And so the real conclusion and the contradiction is that the, the market is actually quite fragile and feels fragile. And then that the contradictory part is, though, is we know we actually have to stay invested. And so instead of, you know, we, we talked six, you know, over the last six months about there's this pandemic portfolio of Netflix and, and Peloton, and we know we don't want to do that because you're jumping on this because then you got to watch your back and jump off as fast as possible. We have really focused on just really sustainable, consistent businesses and building a portfolio of those things. And starting with the conclusion is that we feel that we've really built this great portfolio of businesses that are not too expensive. And, uh, and we feel that we're really set up, not just for this year, but for the next several years. You and I had a, sim- a similar conversation, if we go back a year, with an outlook for the year of 2020. And the, the conclusion that we drew at the time was that we're in a low interest rate world because of a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of debt in the system. There's a lot of deflationary forces with technology. And the impact of having very low interest rates was starting to skew certain parts of the market, whether it's corporate bonds, whether it's equities or, you know, high value equities. And so maybe speak to the, the that dilemma of we're in an, a low interest rate world. If anything, that's been further confirmed in the last year. I mean, in, in the last month, rates have, have ticked up a little bit. But maybe speak to the dilemma that investors face in such a low interest rate world. We'll touch on a few things. And part of the economy, to just to be brief about it, is where you distribute your wealth. But the, the wealth generation that Canada has, you're still making money. Uh, businesses are still operating big, you know, industrial businesses are operating, but there's no place to spend your money. So you're actually getting wealthier. And the interest rates were always going to increase asset prices. And so low interest rate means asset prices can go up, but you've now actually got an awful lot of savings. This is the, the whole point of the, um, because you're not distributing your wealth, you're not going on holidays, there's actually more and more wealth pent up and sort of saying, how can it possibly in a, you know, can housing prices go up in a pandemic? Well, there's a demand for housing prices and the money's there. Right. And so you've got these incredible distortions in asset prices. And so we've always known they could happen, but then the pandemic has sort of accelerated those. And so, and then maybe now we'll, we'll touch into the next topic, which is, is that interest rates are low. Uh, we feel that they might be ticking up, that there, you might actually get headline consumer price inflation over the, the coming year, just because there's, there's still bottlenecks in the system. And if you wanna do something today and there's not very much supply of it, you'll pay more for it than somebody else will. And so we, we think that that might actually tick up inflation, but not necessarily tick up the, the overall level, you know, the level of interest rates that much. Right. What's much more important, though, is that this liquidity, and that's the term that, you know, I hate that it's a, it's a financial, you know, jargon, yeah. and we've spent so much time trying to discuss in another podcast of how does, 
the government takes on more debt, but there's no real place to, you're not printing money, but it does get in the financial system. And maybe we'll just run through, you know, it's just the, the level of liquidity and how we think it's just not stopping. I'll throw that back to you. Yeah, well, I think that goes to the idea of, and we had a similar, similar conversation a year ago of government debt levels were very high and interest rates were low. And it seems like across the board, whether it's in Canada or the US or Europe, the response from policymakers is, is even more stimulus and even more low interest rates. And there's only a few viable ways for governments to get out from underneath the problem that we're all the economies and governments are now facing. And that's for them to, to even further debase the currency, which then means you have these the spillover effect of this money that's been created into assets, into housing, into the stock market, into you know speculative options market or farmland or other hard assets. So you the release valve in a lot of these ways for the amount of money that's been created is asset markets. So, and this is, I think, the dilemma that most investors face is, there's really very few alternatives with interest rates being so low, but at the same time, you, you know, everything feels like there's this, this speculative fever about everything and everything is moving in those kind of directions. And then at the same time, you have the, the regular economy, which is, you know, the main street economy has been decimated and the, the two, you know, don't make sense on their own. But if you look at the whole picture, everything that's happening kind of does make sense. Um, not to say that it's not very difficult for you know the majority of the population, but I think the risk that investors face, and you've touched on this too in previous podcasts, but you know over the long term, with the amount of money that's going to be created, the biggest risk for people is actually being all in cash, because the one thing that's been promised is that governments everywhere are going to create even more cash over the next several years, and that's really the only way out of this. So what are investors to do? in that kind of environment, I think you have to, you know, like you said, own high quality portfolio. If you need liquidity or you're drawing money in retirement, you need some fixed income. You know, our, our innovation that we uh, included last year in the portfolio is having the tail hedge for stock market shock scenarios. So it's really, I think the challenging environment for investors is not likely to change at all. If anything, it's probably going to get more challenging over the next couple of years, but it's very clear where policymakers are taking this. And as investors, we just have to be aware of, of sort of what the different outcomes can be, because the skew of outcomes, I think, is going to be far greater than, you know, the last couple of decades, which have been much more benign environments. Yeah, the simple conclusion exactly to me is just the sideline has been taken away. If you're nervous, oh, the, the markets feel fragile, I'll be on the sidelines. And our conclusion is the sideline is the place where it's actually dangerous. So we have to stay invested. But then, they, then it comes down to what do we invest in? And then uh, and, and as our own take is just like we will from a broad section of the economy, really stable businesses, and we can get our core compounding. And then what you absolutely highlighted is adding the Avenue tail hedge portfolio for, and, and again, it's a jargon word, but systemic risk. But the risk that we have these shocks, meltdowns, which is all the thinking is one way. Everybody's in, you know, hopping on the boat and we're going this direction. And then just one bit of information changes and everybody wants to run to the other side, you know, other side of the boat. It's just unstable. And the tail hedge portfolio helps stabilize how the portfolio behaves. Yeah. Uh, well, I think I think for in that regard, we've sort of touched on all of the things we had in the quarterly letter. Was there anything else that you wanted to touch on or? Yeah, I think we just throw it out, like just making sure we have a constant conversation through yeah. this, you know, and, and mentioning the tail hedge portfolio but now as it's it's live and we're working through it just making sure everybody phones up if they want to phone up and have a conversation and and uh, you know i'm looking forward to getting out with everybody by the end of the year but i think for the next sort of six months yeah. or so it's still going to be you know on the phone emails making sure we stay in touch with everybody yeah and I, and I think the other thing i would add too for for clients out there listening to this either on on youtube or wherever else you get your podcast um, you know, we all would really encourage you to read the quarterly letter uh, for, for this quarter. It's on the website and it's also in your email um, or in your, in your Avenue portal. We really think that there's a lot, of, a lot of interesting things going on and we try to touch on as many things as possible. And in that regard, we always welcome feedback and, and questions from clients. So why don't we wrap it up on that and then we'll look forward to having another conversation again soon. Great. Perfect. I hope you enjoyed today's conversation. You can find us on avenueinvestment.com where you can learn more about the topics discussed today at our blog or subscribe for updates to our content. You can also follow us on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcasts. 
Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.